I'm sporting my nifty wings to celebrate Polish heritage. These things are great in battle. The enemy will hear the thrumming of horse hooves and the humming of thousands of wings in the breeze. Cresting the hill, they will see what appears to be angels, or is it demons, charging toward them with long lances. They are the Hussar warriors, and they are awesome. Man, these wings are heavy. Uh, uh, oh. uh. Anyway, I want to talk about the Polish saber. In my opinion, the Polish Saber is one of the most intriguing swords in existence. So many elements of its design are unique unto itself, and the proper use is something of a mystery. For HEMA practitioners, that's Historical European Martial Arts, it can be something of a puzzle. This is due to a distinct lack of solid, comprehensive, and martially sound sources. Thankfully, we have Richard Marsden, the former president of the HEMA Alliance, stepping in to help us put some, but not all, of the pieces back together. The Polish Saber, by Richard Marsden, may be one of the best examples I have ever seen of not only providing the reader with usable information on its primary topic, the Polish Saber combat on foot, but also giving insight into the scholastic and research-driven approach necessary to make heads or tails of a lost martial art. The first quarter of the book is a history lesson of Poland in the 17th century, focusing a lot on dress, culture, political structure, and details of the sabers themselves while glossing over the larger events. And there is good reason for this. The topics covered give some insight into how the martial art would have developed. I'll give you an example. One of the more common pastimes was polkati, which was essentially stick fighting a form of game in which children and astute politicians alike would participate. How this game was played gives some insight into how the saber would have been used, with focus being paid special attention to the hand. Ow! While it is not outright stated, it at least comes close to connecting the pieces to helping us understand the apparent lack of handguards. The second piece of the puzzle comes later. This historical connection is not only fascinating, but it is also extremely important in understanding the scholastic process that must be used to develop a proper, martially sound method. The next quarter of the book is a look at historical sources on saber fighting. These don't come in the form of fight books like we have for other disciplines, such as the German longsword, but rather as anecdotal stories told by an old warrior, and a few offhand mentions of methods in other writers noting Polish methods. And just like cloning dinosaurs with frog DNA, adding a little bit of martial information from other martial sources, such as German or Italian fight books, these last bits help us in filling some of the much needed gaps in the understanding necessary to develop a sensible method. Remember the handguard puzzle? Well, the second part of that puzzle gets covered as you begin to see the use of the Moulinet which is a fancy way of using your wrist and fingers to give the sword momentum without the use of your larger arm. Something much harder to do, if not impossible, with a complex handguard. So the design of the sword is a trade-off of hand safety and usability. This feeds right back into further deciphering the source material. The sword designs themselves give us the insight. In reading the first half of this book, Anyone already experienced in HEMA would actually have a pretty good understanding of the methodology and could probably even be able to work hard on their own to develop the method for fighting. Thankfully, for the lazy and everyone else, the last half of the book then goes into the interpretation of the sources, all with lovely pictures describing the process, stances, guards, attacks, parries, defensive movements, and even a little grappling. This is the most valuable part of the book for those wanting to get out there and try it. Marsden also provides a little section in the back of the book for sources on gear and equipment. This makes this a somewhat usable book for a HEMA newbie. However, I feel this is one of the two weak points of the book. While it is a great book that gives you almost everything you need, it does presume a lot of the lessons that need to be learned in a general HEMA sense. Small things like really understanding the importance of timing, clearly defining what is meant by tempo when talking about sword combat, and the vital importance of balance and proper footwork. 
Essentially, the author with years and years of experience may have forgotten what it is like to be brand new to the topic. If this book was the only thing a person had, it may not be sufficient. Best to go find a local club or study some basics in Fiore or Lichtenauer before diving in. The second minor failure of this book is not in the authorship, but in the editing. The page layouts and multi-page visual instructions can become just a little confusing, and it makes it very hard to have a single page open to learn a single thing, and instead you end up having to do a lot of flipping back and forth, back and forth, to come to grips with the topic at hand. Both of these are minor gripes, however, as the book overall is very solid, very interesting, and as I said before, it is an incredible insight into the process necessary to recreate a fighting method from only a few sources. This showcases Marsden's scholastic ability within HEMA as well as giving us an example of what can be done with one of the worst case scenarios when it comes to reviving a lost art. The Polish Saber by Richard Marsden. I give it a 4 out of 5.